Donald Trump has returned to the Oval Office, bringing with him a renewed promise to make America great again. And he's setting his sights on the stock market to make that happen. Today, we're going to dive into the stocks that may benefit most from Trump's return to power. We'll look at companies positioned to capitalise on his policies and explore where potential gains may be found. If you're ready to see which stocks might thrive in the next four years, let's jump in. On Qualtrum, I've created a watch list that lists some of the companies that I think will benefit the most from this Trump term in office. Some of these companies are ones that you may have heard of before and you may already realise that they will benefit. The likes of Tesla with Elon Musk attaching himself to Donald Trump's government. We also have gas and oil giants, Chevron Corporation and ExxonMobil. And then we have two big hitters of the financial world. We've got JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. These are all companies that a lot of you could have already guessed might benefit. But today we're going to look at one especially that some of you may never have heard of. The Geo Group is a real estate investment trust that specialises in private correctional facilities, detention centres and community re-entry facilities in the United States and internationally. The company provides a range of services including detention, transportation and rehabilitation programmes. GEO operates primarily under government contracts, working with federal, state and local agencies such as US Immigration and Customs Enforcement and state prison systems. On the news of Donald Trump winning the election, the share prices rose 42% in one day to $21.50 and this has raised the market cap of the company to around $3 billion. If we look at the stock chart year to date, it shows that Geo are up around 99.81% as of right now. And the majority of these gains have come recently due to Trump returning to office. This may be due to several factors, including Trump's support for private prisons. He has historically supported tougher law enforcement and immigration policies, and under his previous administration, the GEO Group saw increased demand for detention facilities and secure correctional facilities. Trump's policies will no doubt encourage a return to the stricter immigration enforcement that potentially could lead to new contracts for immigration detention centres managed by GEO. If we now look at GEO's revenue for the last five years, it has remained relatively steady, generally staying in the range of $550 million to $650 million per quarter. This stability suggests that the company's income from government contracts and other operations has been fairly consistent without extreme fluctuations. There are some small ups and downs in revenue across the years, but nothing drastic. For example, you see some slight dips in some quarters, but Geo's revenue usually recovers quickly in the following periods. It's going to be really interesting in the next year or so to see whether there's a dramatic uptick in the Geo Group's revenue. Trump has promised to increase government spending on border security, which could include expanding detention infrastructure, with government funding directed towards building or enhancing detention facilities, Geo may benefit directly either through new contracts or expansion of current ones, leading to potentially higher revenue. If we now look at the company's cash, debt and capital lease obligations over the past three years, debt has consistently remained high over this period of time, generally around or exceeding $2 billion each quarter. For the GEO Group, high debt levels are both a risk and a strategic ploy, the company operates in one of the most capital intensive industries out there. Running and maintaining secure detention facilities requires constant investment in infrastructure, from security systems to facility updates. Imagine running a business where every building you own has to meet strict government standards and is subject to constant wear and tear. That's the reality of this business model. But here's where it gets interesting. The business model is built on long-term government contracts, which provide stable revenue streams. 
This stability allows Geo to carry more debt comfortably, knowing that they have reliable income to service it. Banks have distanced themselves from the private prison industry, so Geo has fewer options for financing and has to heavily rely on debt. The question now is, with the political shift of Donald Trump coming into office, will this potentially bring private prisons back into favour? And could Geo finally chip away at this mountain of debt? My personal opinion on the Geo Group right now is that I'm actually really bullish and I think it's got serious potential to outperform the market, especially with the way things are shifting politically. Geo is positioned right at the centre of any administration's efforts to tackle illegal immigration. With a renewed focus on stricter border policies and enforcing immigration laws, demand for detention facilities could surge massively. And Geo, with its government contracts and established infrastructure, is in a prime position to meet that demand. We've been over Geo's revenue and we've seen firsthand that it's stayed solid over the years, even with all the political pushback, which says a lot about the strength of the business model. If we see more government spending on border security and immigration enforcement, it's hard not to see how that wouldn't trickle down and directly benefit Geo. And with their gradual efforts to manage debt, I believe they're setting themselves up for a strong, sustainable growth period. It's a stock that's been hit by controversy, sure, but that's also why it's underpriced compared to its potential. We're now going to look at Nucor Corporation. This is one of the largest steel producers in America, but they're not just any steel company. What makes Nucor unique is its approach to steel making. Instead of the traditional, more polluting blast furnaces, Nucor uses electric arc furnaces, which recycle scrap metal to produce steel. This method is not only more sustainable, but also more efficient, helping them keep costs low and quality high. They produce everything from steel beams and sheets to steel bars and joists, supplying major industries like construction, automotive and energy. Think about it. Every skyscraper, every bridge, every part of your car might be made with new core steel. And with infrastructure spending due to rise with Donald Trump winning the election, Nucor's position to capitalise on all that demand for American-made steel. One of Nucor's core values is to become a carbon neutral company by 2050. Just taking a glance at the share price year to date, you can see that the company has struggled this year and the share price is currently down minus 4.38% year to date. But there has been a bounce in share price since Donald Trump was announced the election winner. The share price did sit at around $142 and it has now rebounded to $164. If we now look how Nucor Corporation could benefit significantly from Donald Trump becoming president again, we have quite a few reasons. The first one being Trump's American First trade policies. Trump has previously emphasised policies that protect US industries from foreign competition. During his last term, he actually introduced tariffs on imported steel, making foreign steel far more expensive and giving American companies a competitive edge in domestic markets. If similar tariffs were reintroduced, it would likely increase demand for companies like Nucor's products, as US businesses look to buy more American-made steel. And with infrastructure spending looking to be increased, Trump has expressed strong support for rebuilding America's infrastructure. This includes roads, bridges and public facilities. These projects will require vast amounts of steel and as one of the largest steel producers, this company would be well positioned to meet this demand. Increased government spending on infrastructure could lead to a surge in orders which would boost Nucor's revenue and market share. With this politically supportive landscape, a Trump presidency could create a much more favourable environment for a company like Nucor through the tariffs on foreign steel, 
increased demand from infrastructure projects and a support from domestic manufacturing. These factors could boost Nucor's revenues and help it outperform the market. Let's dive into Nucor's revenue story. Over the last five years, we see a wild ride, kicking off strong around 2020 and then taking off like a rocket through 2021 and 2022, reaching peak revenue just under 12 billion per quarter. That's some serious cash flow. But here's where things get interesting. After that massive peak, things started to cool off. We're seeing a pullback in recent quarters, which shows Nucor isn't immune to the ups and downs in steel demand and pricing. In fact, the company's one-year revenue dropped by around 15%, and it's down 15.8% over two years. If infrastructure spending picks up again, or tariffs come back under a Trump administration, we could see Nucor ready to fire back up. This is a cyclical industry, but Nucor's positioned to ride the waves. 